the border town of Liza. For half a century, it's been a Kachin stronghold. Its people thrived on trade with China. Today, though, its streets are largely deserted. This is why. For weeks, the Burmese military has been pounding Kachin positions close to the town. The Kachin forces have lost significant amounts of territory. This despite a government promise of a new deal for Burma's minorities and their armies. So a ceasefire by the Burmese side should be welcome news. But the soldiers stationed on this hilltop were still digging out the bodies of comrades killed in yesterday's airstrikes, and they were nervous. Every thud or report of government planes sent us all scurrying to cover. We've arrived at one of the most forward posts now being held by the Kachin Independence Army, but these people have been bombed from the air, they've been hit by artillery, and you can see they're dug into these bunkers, carved out of these forested hills. They've taken a lot of casualties, they've also lost a lot of ground, and for them this ceasefire is very hard to believe. The recent fighting, they told me, was the most intense they'd ever experienced, and some were veterans. Lieutenant Karen Kong Do has been in the Kachin army for 10 years. I don't believe the Burmese army's ceasefire, he said. It's probably a trick. The price they've paid has only hardened Kachin resolve. Panyan Kang Ra has come to the grave of her husband, who was shot dead four days ago. I'm not sad, she said. I'm proud. She expects one of her sons to take his father's place, fighting for the recognition and autonomy that has eluded the Kachin people for more than 60 years. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Liza, Kachin State.